not about James Washington. It's definitely not about Ray Ray McLeod. When Juju Smith-Schuster went down for the season, he needed to be replaced all along by a player at a different position. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also offer up Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates right where you found this. Pat Fryermuth has done exceptionally well, exceptionally well within the opportunities that he's been given. What hasn't been done exceptionally well is ensuring that he gets more of these opportunities. So far, kids got 18 catches for 158 yards, 12 of those 18 catches brought first downs. Most of those catches have come over the middle of the field. And it's borderline inconceivable that he drops anything that comes his way. And when I say that, I am not talking just about games. You need to see this kid in practice. You need to see this kid doing things in routine drills where a ball is coming his way and it looks like not even 50-50. It looks like a 40-60 or even a 30-70 ball. And somehow it'll end up in his hands and he turns and he's running upfield. I don't mean to make him out to be more than he is. If anything, I'm underselling him. But way more important than that, I feel like the Steelers are still underselling or undervaluing him. Not that they don't say the right things. Here's what Matt Canada had to say to us this week on the subject of Fryermuth. I just think, obviously, his knowledge of the, of the speed of the game. And, and Pat's, Pat's a great student of the game. He cares. He wants to win. He wants to be where he's supposed to be, do what he's supposed to do. Um, Fredo's done a great job with him. You look at him being a rookie and all the things we're asking him to do. And I think he gets better every week. And obviously, that you know, that's going to continue to grow. And like I mentioned earlier, the rapport with Ben is big and important. And nothing but time and reps gets that done. And you know, we can all talk about this, that, until you're out there playing, it doesn't happen. So I think he's doing a great job. And we have to continue to try to put him in a position to make plays. That's a fair assessment. The credit doesn't just go to the player. Alfredo Roberts, a tight ends coach, has had to show Fryermuth a lot of different things, things that he didn't necessarily have to master when he was at Penn State. Unspoken there, but known to be the truth, is that Fryermuth showed up for rookie minicamp without really much of an awareness of how to block at the NFL level. I don't mean to be disrespectful of James Franklin and his staff. It's not like they don't teach their tight ends to block, but there's a way to do that in the NFL, given some of the locomotives and advanced blitzes and schemes that are coming your way. That's the part that Roberts really had to nail down, and that's a process that's very much ongoing. If it wasn't ongoing, you would not see Zach Gentry on the field as a tight end as often as you do. So what's everyone waiting for then? What's everyone waiting for? Get him more involved. This portion of Daily Shot of Steelers is brought to you by Point Park University. Choose from nearly 100 career-focused programs leading to bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees. Choose when and how you'd prefer to do that studying, whether it's at Point Park's gorgeous downtown Pittsburgh campus, whether it's online. Maybe a flexible hybrid format works best for you. Learn more about all of this at pointpark.edu. It's getting there. Mind you, I'm not filing some kind of retroactive complaint here. It's getting there. Fryermuth had seven catches for 58 yards the other day against the Seahawks. And there, too, he was making himself available over the middle. And for what it's worth, afterwards sounded, you know, pretty confident about where he is. And and he's 
a straight shooter. I can tell you that from dealing with him. He's not going to be somebody who's going to blow smoke about this because he's acknowledged things that remained a challenge to him, and, and this is the way he spoke after that game. Um, probably just my understanding of the offense. Um, you know, you know, I understand a little bit going into uh, the season, but you know, I think just you know, getting used to that, you know, game speed and everything like that, um, and kind of understanding what they're asking me to do in the offense. Um, just getting used to that throughout the season um, so far. That's probably where I've grown the most. An increased usage of Fryermuth doesn't solve every problem that this offense has. The Steelers continue to search for an effective field stretcher. So far, most unfortunately, even though it's a good thing, that player has been Deontay Johnson. Deontay, not the biggest guy, but you can at least count on Deontay to run the right route, look at the ball, fight for the ball, make something happen after he catches the ball. And if all of those things sound like shots at Chase Claypool, so be it. Because Claypool's not getting that done. Any of the four, any of the four. So that's still a need. But when I look at the way that offense performed the other day against the Seahawks, and I did not find many pluses in that whole performance other than what Najee Harris and a couple other guys, including Fryermuth, did. I'm seeing a team that reverted, regressed in a lot of ways from what it had done the previous week against the Broncos. I saw a team that looked like, "Uh uh-oh, they took away all our options, so we're just going to check down, check down, check down, check down, check down. And they did. And they did. And they got away with it. They got away with the whole thing because they won the game. But I didn't see a step forward there other than, you know, to an extent and a modest extent, the running game. So I'm looking for things that don't just advance the sticks, but that advance the overall approach to getting better. Knock down the pins. One of the biggest pins, arguably the biggest of all, since John Harbaugh completely solved the Steelers' offense last season and sent the blueprint out, apparently, to the other 30 coaches in the NFL, was getting over the middle. There really wasn't a weapon for that last year. Vance McDonald was on his last legs, as we saw. Eric Ebron was dropping way too much and really couldn't be trusted to stay on the field because he couldn't block. Now you have, you have that weapon. You can scare teams in the National Football League with a tight end meaning scaring opposing defenses. When the Steelers are facing, uh, and I don't mean to put Friar Muth into a class with Travis Kelsey, but when the Steelers are facing, or anybody's facing, the Kansas City Chiefs, you hear almost as much discussion about Kelsey as you do Patrick Mahomes. Why? Teams can't handle him. They can't defend him. They can't stop him. In the New England heydays, Who would you hear about almost as much as Tom Brady? Yeah, Gronk. Defensive coordinators hate when they're facing something that they know they can only try to contain as opposed to stopping it. I believe the Steelers have at least the beginning, the beginning of this type of player. He might not be a star. He might not be, you know, Pro Bowl, all pro, whatever, maybe he will. I don't mean to put a cap on him. But if you have that weapon and you have these shortcomings as an offense, not using Fryermuth would make just about as much sense as not using Najee. When we come back, just one question. Welcome back. 
have time for just one question. That's brought to you always by the personal injury law firm of Luxembourg, Garvin, Kelly, and George, LGAG. They represent people who've been hurt in car accidents, who need assistance with workers' comp and medical malpractice claims. The attorneys at LGKG have been super lawyers, an official designation, that is, for over 15 years. That's reserved for the top 5% of all attorneys in Pennsylvania. Learn more about them at lgkg.com or by calling 888-842-5454. Our J1Q comes from Matt Hanford, who asks, with Nick Chubb posting the second highest rushing yardage so far this year and the Steelers offering little against the Seahawks run game last week, how nervous should we be of Cleveland tearing us a new one in the game after the bye week? Well, Matt, as I'm sure you know, the Browns are playing tonight at home against the Broncos. And as I'm sure you further know, they're really banged up. And as I'm sure you further, further know, there's nothing that causes and or aggravates injuries in the NFL quite like a Thursday game following a Sunday game. Players everywhere for years have complained about it, and bitterly so, and arguably rightly so. So Chubb is coming off an injury. The Browns do expect to have him, but he's he's banged up. Kareem Hunt was just lost for several weeks with his own injury this past Sunday in the loss to the Cardinals. Baker Mayfield, who has a a torn labrum, which sounds really awful, uh, in his shoulder, it's, it's one of those injuries that they'll tell you that every quarterback and every baseball pitcher has a torn labrum to some extent. It's just a matter of to what degree. Well, Baker's was pretty bad, and then he fell on it the wrong way after being brought down by J.J. Watt, and J.J. got all animated and bringing out the and waving toward the Cleveland sideline for the medical people to come because I'm sure he could hear Baker screaming. So Baker's not in great shape. Jarvis Landry was banged up. He's probably going to be back. Odell Beckham Jones. All these guys, uh, two offensive linemen. And I'm not even getting into the, the defensive side. The Browns are in bad shape. So any and all analyses that come before watching them get into even worse shape, which is a virtual certainty with the schedule and the desperation with which you're expecting Denver to be performing, this isn't exactly some nothing game for the Broncos. They really need to win. And after watching the Cardinals, they probably feel like they can win or even should win. So that question is going to be better answered uh, once we see the state of the Browns and specifically Chubb and Mayfield and the guys that make their running attack, you know, have legs. That said, you know, I don't see the Steelers' defense, Matt, as being one where I go, whoa, I'm really worried about them getting regularly gashed by the run. Yeah, I saw the third quarter, too. I was there. But the Seahawks took advantage of the Steelers being really stubborn for way too long into that second half with a game plan that everyone openly, even publicly acknowledged was going to be aimed at preventing Geno Smith from passing. No kidding. I mean, Geno Smith making his first start in four years. Geno Smith known as a running quarterback back when he did play football. And the game plan was to stop him from passing. So it went on for a while. I thought it took longer to adjust than what I've seen others suggest. There's people giving the Steelers credit for adjusting after two drives. I didn't see that. I saw one tinkering after that second drive, and that was to slide Cam Hayward over to the left, to his left, because that's where Seattle had been doing most of its rushing, picking on Chris Wormley, Isaiah Bugs, whoever else was lined up over there. 
that began it, but it wasn't until they started bringing more bodies up to the box and saying, that's it, we're just not going to allow any runs, instead of waiting for the safeties to do all the tackling. If the Steelers have their guys, and I know this is going to sound like excuse making, except I'm not part of the team, so I can't make excuses. I'm not out there. If the Steelers have their guys, meaning Stefan Tuitt, Tyson Alualu, Cam Hayward, if they have their front five, including TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith, obviously, they're not going to be getting gashed by anybody. So I don't see this as some kind of long-term concern. I see where you are. Cleveland is only nine days away. But it's, you know, it's it, it's not something that really, I think, would be a, a number one issue even leading into next week. But again, let's see how it goes tonight. I appreciate the question, Matt. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. Let's do another one tomorrow in which we will be discussing.